We're almost ready for our special presentation and to do a special introduction is Ryan from Hobby Co. Um, good afternoon guys, this is a very important um, panel for us. We have all the way from Japan, Mr. Kawaguchi! Big welcome, come on, give a bit of energy, let's do this, let's do this! He will be building with us to show you guys uh, some building techniques and so on. So this is very much a privilege. We feel very humbled to have him over here. Um, and Tom will be translating for us. So Tom, do your best, buddy. Okay. Uh, so today there are two demonstration sessions and there will be a different demonstration for each session. So this session will be on techniques for sanding. So this time uh, we'll be using the metal files as well as sand file, uh, sandpaper, but either could this one. Uh, so we'll begin with uh, basic file, uh, how to use a file. So because uh, yep, the many people build Gundam from you know, uh, young children to adults uh, for safety, uh, some of the parts have uh, rounded edges, so this is where you need the files. Okay. So the easiest part to see this rounding in is on the uh, V-fin antenna of the Gundams. Uh, you can see in the picture. So by sharpening the V-fin, like the feeling of the Gundam is improved. Just a reminder folks, Daisuke Anime Consortium Japan are currently doing a presentation in the Anime Panels room. Casey Live Chair will also be doing an anime song signings in five minutes. So when sharpening a V-pin, it's a good idea to actually cut the piece at the sprue, as shown, so that you've got a part to hold easily. Uh, so you tend to do it in two parts. You will cut off the bulb at the back first, So first you use a pair of nippers and cut off the part on the back, the bulb on the back. So cut that to the flat and then using a file. Uh, just smooth off the remaining nub. So, 
So now still the front of it is still rounded, so we'll now actually use the file on the front as well, uh, around the all surfaces in order to make the V-pin sharp. So the file use is well, as, as demonstrated. Uh, so also make sure that you keep your file clean so that it keeps cutting properly. And it's important to make sure that as you file, you keep the angles right so that it is still like a triangular sort of shape of the V-pin uh, as opposed to turning it flat. Uh, so it's quite easy thing to do, uh, and we and so we, we recommend you know doing these sort of simpler things would really help improve the image of the Gundam. Uh, this time, while we're using sandpaper and a file, it's still okay to just use a file. Uh, so as you are filing away the sharpening the V-fin, it does get thinner, and so do be careful, because it will get weaker as well, so be careful not to break the part. So as you're filing, every now and then, make sure you check on either side so you haven't like turned around the piece, so make sure you haven't made it uneven. Okay, so now we'll hand around the part, so you can see that the treatment was done only on one side, so you can tell the difference. So this time we only demonstrated sharpening the antenna, uh, but there will be many other parts of a Gundam that will look cooler if you sharpen them. So this time we're going to cover the sanding of like beam savers and beam shields parts, which are a bit different with sanding. Uh, so the parts come molded fully clear. And so we're going to do some detailing to add the sort of power lines uh, into the beam pot. So just earlier you saw Mark doing these sorts of things uh, with an airbrush, uh, but we'll show you how to do it without an airbrush this time. Uh, so this is good for the people without an airbrush. So it is a nice, simple technique to improve the look of your beam saber.
So using uh, sandpaper for this technique. So using the sandpaper, uh, roughening the surface, the entire surface of the pot. So normally when you're sanding and filing, your aim is to make the surface smooth, uh, but in this case you actually want the surface to be rough. Uh, so on something like a beam saber, don't sand the whole surface, just uh, uh, from about the center upwards. And then in the lower parts, when you're sanding, only like light sanding, so just a little bit. Okay, so now as a result, like the tip of the beam saber is starting to sort of take on a white color. Uh, so this way you can get a gradient from clear to like opaque. So just to be clear, uh, it's not very much filing down the bottom and all of the sanding sort of at the tip of the beam saber. Um, did anyone want to actually try this technique? So uh, it came out quite well, especially since um, I think this is the first time that Dylan has ever done this. So yeah, we'll, we'll be passing this piece around. And, you know, this is a, a good technique because you know it's it's not too difficult to do and helps improve the the look of your Gundam. So uh, this time on a beam shield, uh, the technique is similar, but you need to consider uh, the direction of sanding instead of sanding uh, the whole surface. Okay, so this time to make the effect more uh, easy to see, uh, we'll just sand only half of this piece so then we can easily see the difference. Uh, so just using masking tape to prevent getting scratches on one half of this particular beam shield.
Uh, so similar to the beam saber, uh, you want to actually consider where the beam is coming from. In this case, it's the center of the shield. So take care when you're sanding to just sand on the outside edges of the beam shield. So when using this sandpaper, uh, because you're, you're trying to actually make it rough, so use like from say 240 to 300 grit sandpaper. So when you're doing this technique, uh, try, make sure you don't go overboard with your sanding uh, because then it will sort of ruin the effect. So just a, just a little bit uh, to make the effect right um, and pay attention to the direction of the sanding again. Uh, so make sure you do it little bit by little bit uh, because in the event that you make a mistake uh, with the clear parts can be quite hard to uh, correct errors on. So by sanding on both sides, on the front and the back, uh, you can actually generate like the, the deeper opaque color. So we'll now take off the masking tape so it's, you can see the difference. So you can see which side has been sanded and which one nothing has been done to. So this piece will also be passed around. So this is showing that sort of sometimes uh, the initial purpose of the tool doesn't have to be used the same way and to generate uh, a different effect. So if you, it's a good idea like to practice on the runners uh, because you're not going to use those pieces anyway. So you can test on different parts of the runner uh, how much sanding will change the colors and then as a result, you can use that as experience so you don't make a mistake on the real part. And so on the, uh, the plate that labels the sprues, uh, that's also a nice area for you to practice the same technique as on the beam shield.
So this is a good example of being able to use some basic tools and uh, not any particularly complicated technique in order to create a new effect. Um, and we're also going to pass around the other runner as well. So at the moment we're just looking for a mechanical pencil. Okay, so now we've got a mechanical pencil. So we're going to show you another technique uh, using sandpaper that is different to how you would normally use sandpaper. So this time's World Cup winner actually sanded the entire uh, model and this is a bit different. So this time, uh, most of the entries uh, in this year's uh, Gunpla Builders World Cup uh, have painted their works. So some people may not like to, to choose to use the original colour of uh, the plastic um, and this will be a technique to show you uh, so this is a technique for uh, when you're not painting your kit. So similar to using a, uh, like a clear top coat uh, to improve your model kit, uh, this is a similar sort of technique. Uh, so for this te technique, uh, it's important to use a, a, a very fine sandpaper, uh, around 1,500 grit. So using this fine sandpaper, uh, sand like the whole uh, surface of the part. Um, 
So you may be wondering why you would sand the whole surface. Um, and it's because when you try and draw on a part with a mechanical pencil, as you can see, uh, the one that hasn't been sanded, the pencil line uh, rubs off very easily. And so now we're going to see uh, the difference of uh, using the mechanical pencil on the sanded part. And so now we're actually, after having sanded the whole surface, uh, using, as you can see, on the sandpaper, uh, drawing with a mechanical pencil. So then take a cotton bud and just use the tip of it and get it into the uh, graphite powder you just made. And so using now the, the mechanical pencil lead uh, to make the shadows and shading on the part. So uh, take care of uh, where you're planning to uh, make the white sort of highlights with this technique. And so then you can use the other side of the cotton bud to like clean it up and make the highlights. So in the area that is like where the shadows would lie on the part. Um, so uh, most model builders will already have like a, a mechanical pencil and the sandpaper and cotton buds uh, close by when they're building models. And we're also going to pass around that piece. So in order to protect that part as well, it's a good idea to put a clear coating after it um, because at the moment, uh, while, while it doesn't rub off as easily as, uh, say, an unsanded piece of plastic, uh, if you do touch it, you can still take off the shading. Uh, but if you just used a clear coat, a top coat over the top of that, that would uh, seal in the shading and then it would be all fine. Uh, so this is like the demonstration of the techniques uh, without using any of the, the special tools and paints.
So there are a lot of things that can be done uh, with just uh, sandpaper and files. So you can also see that the mechanical pencil uh, can be um, useful for very easy uh, doing the, uh, the panel line drawing. So yeah, just using the mechanical pencil, you're able to do uh, just sort of a nice little a light accent. Um, uh, so if any of the members of the audience have some questions uh, about what we just did, uh, we can answer those. Did anyone have any questions for Master Kalkuchi? Uh, or, or did someone want to try this technique? Using the cotton bud to clean it, as you can see, when you went just along with the line, the one that was uh, 90 degrees to the line has a lot more colour left in it. So. Uh, it's not too difficult using the mechanical pencil uh, to uh, draw the lines all over the model. Mr. Kawaguchi will be back at 2 o'clock and his next session will be covering how to use paint on your models. So please come back at 2 o'clock to see Mr. Kawaguchi once again do a demonstration for us.